Hi, it's John Bach from BachBiodynamics.com. In this series of videos, I'm going to go through how to make an insulated beehive by yourself using very simple carpentry techniques. And well, you can make a beehive using an existing hive, but we're also going to go through how to make uh, an insulated beehive from scratch using half inch plywood and some 2x4s and some uh, insulated materials that are available at your building supply store. We'll go over those when we get into the shop. Why make an insulated beehive? Well, here's a book some of you are probably familiar with. It's the ABC XYZ or XYZ of bee culture. Probably the most famous book ever written on beekeeping. First edition was written in 1877. And in the section on wintering, this is what he has to say about insulated beehives. It is sheer folly to attempt to winter bees outdoors in single walled hives north of 40 degrees latitude. While the colonies may come through after a fashion, the shock of the exposure will be so great that they'll probably not be good for much to gather honey. It is therefore important that the hives be protected from high winds and that the surrounding, that the walls surrounding the hive be double and warm. Special double walled hives are manufactured, the space being filled with chafe, planter shavings, leaves, or other suitable materials. I have a nice picture here. There's a lot of great diagrams in this book. I'll see if I can get that in focus. So yeah, it's a great book. Today we have even better insulated materials. We have foam board and we have a rock saw. This rock saw makes a really nice insulated uh, material that's really great for these hives. You can get those at your building materials store. And also the bottom boards too. I think it's very important. A lot of people, it's kind of the fad these days, they overwinter these their bees using an open bottom board with just a screen. I think that's crazy. The bees can't be healthy in cold weather when there's a big draft coming underneath. So I make a bottom board, again, using really simple techniques that has uh, an insulated component where you can slide an insulated board in there and close it off so they can stay warm when the weather's cold and you can open it up when you want circulation in there. You can open it up in the summer and the bees can get more air circulation. So it's a three-part video. And north of 40, by the way, which the book talks about, north of 40 is Northern California, and you can draw a straight line all the way across continental U.S. to New Jersey. So anything north of that, which is basically the top half of the U.S. and, of course, all of Canada. I'm in Vancouver, and today it's snowing like crazy. It's really tough on your bees if they don't have the ability to retain that heat in the cluster. That heat in the cluster... If you have an open bottom and you don't have an insulated wall, that just dissipates. And so the bees have to produce more and more heat, which means they have to eat more of their winter stores, and which increases the possibility of them getting a worse infection for nosema, for example, or, or dysentery. And the bonus for you is that if the bees consume less honey because they're more efficient and they have an insulated beehive, there's going to be more honey for you that you can extract in the spring. It's interesting in this book as well that he, he talks about, AI Root talks about the amount of honey that bees need to overwinter is 20 to 30 pounds. You look in most books today, they say you need upwards of 100 pounds. And I would say that's because the beehives are not very efficient and they're losing a lot of heat. And the bees keep having to generate heat and they have to eat more honey. So it's a three-part series. The first part is how to create uh, an insulated beehive using single walled hive that you may already have. Second part will be making a beehive from scratch using half inch plywood and insulated materials. So those are the boxes. The third part will be making the bottom board and the roof. And um, I might do the roof in part two. We'll see how it goes along. But anyways, it's a three part series that'll totally cover all you're gonna need to know. And it's gonna be covering the tools as well. You need a jigsaw, um, you'll need T-square, tape measure and a drill and that's about it. I'll go over that when we get in the shop. So I hope you enjoy these videos and uh, if you like them let me know and happy carpentry. We'll talk to you soon. Here's one of, uh, this is an insulated hive right here and it's in action right now. The bees aren't flying, it's pretty cold out but they were flying the other day. I painted the roof but it's a wider hive as you can see and uh, the bees are doing good. That's a one room hive that I've afterwards insulated but here's the hive that we're going to be making as you can see it's 
it's snowing like crazy today. So I really feel it's important to have this kind of hive in a northern environment. So let's go to the shop. Hi, we're in the shop. Here's a hive that I uh, made with my brother. He's gonna get bees this year. And uh, you can see it's all butt joints. Um, it's not quite finished yet. We have to sand it. And then I'll probably give it a paint um, with some white paint or just especially paint the roof, waterproof that. So here's basically what it is. It's a roof with a little slant on it. And uh, just to let any precipitation roll off the back. It's got a little rim on here, just like most roofs do. So pretty basic construction, just two by fours and a sheet of half inch right there. That's the roof. Uh, the next piece is a standard um, bottom board. I like, or pardon me, uh, inside cover, which uh, I make pretty thick. Here's an entrance here. So for the bees, uh, they have a winter entrance and a summer entrance too. You're gonna use the bottom board in, um, pardon me, the bottom board in uh, the summer, or pardon me, the inside cover in the summer. So that's that. The next piece is, um, this is a, a, it's like a rim, but it's just got a screen in the bottom, or a screen on the bottom of it, which I use to insulate the top so that we have insulated sides. And here's the top. And what I put in here are planar shavings. So these are just shavings from my thickness planer. And I just put those in there, fill them right up. And the nice thing is you can go in here on a winter day like today, and you can feel if they're damp because the bees do produce a little moisture when they're heating the hive. And then you can just pull it out, take a little bit out if it's a little bit damp and put some more in. It really doesn't get that bad at all. The moisture issue for me is not an issue. I know a lot of people, I've read that it's a big issue and that's why you have to have an open bottom board. But uh, I have not found that to be the case at all. So this is, uh, and it's nice about this is I put a little rim here so that if uh, you wanna feed your bees, there'll be of course, You'll have frames here. You can slide in a little bit of crystallized honey on a sheet of wax paper. Alternately, you can put a thicker rim on here when things warm up a little bit. And then you can put some uh, a liquid feed or whatever way you like to do it. So this is uh, an insulated top cover that insulates the top of it when the weather's pretty cold. And then uh, this is just a standard um, super right here. Um, it's upside down actually. Um, and so uh, the frames just fit in here. This would be a, the frame, a super sized frame. Uh, it's a six and five eighths. So you have your frames in here, right across. Insulated, you'll notice it's quite thick. And um, these are the vent holes. I'm gonna put some screen on these. Um, and what's nice about this, if it gets really cold, you can put a cork in there and you can cover those right up. And again, half inch plywood, all butt joints. You can miter joint these if you're more advanced and you can have a nice finish here, but it doesn't matter. These are bulletproof, really strong hives. Um, glued, everything's glued. We'll go over that. So this is a super, and uh, here's a, a brood box, or a deep, if you wanna call it that. And again, your frames just pop in here, and uh, all the way across, you got your 10 frames. So that's what that looks like. Now, here's the bottom board. It's pretty thick, right? I make a thick bottom board. And the reason I do that is you got your screen in there, which is pretty standard. But I think it's crazy to have um, an open air bottom board where all that cold air can just come up. So I put in some Styro Span. This is a Dow product. It's an inch and a half thick. I think it's an R4. You can get it at any building center. It just pops in there. And so when it's cold weather, you put it in, when it's warm, you take it out. I mean, you could probably, if it was kind of in between, like, you know, you know, five degrees Celsius or something, and you wanted to get a little bit of air in there, you can open it up. Or you could just, you know, cut one of these in two and put ha cover half of it. Gives you a lot of options. And another nice thing is, uh, that I felt is, is something that's really needed is, when you have uh, the winter, the bees are gonna, um, there, uh, there's gonna be a lot of dead bees coming onto the screen here, as probably a lot of you know, and it's kind of a hassle to kind of get in here with a stick and just pull them out from the other side or to try to jam a vacuum in there. And I always thought it'd be great if you could just, in the winter, pull it out, pull out that screen, take a couple seconds. And so if it's cold, 
you got your insulated board in here. You pull this out, tap, tap, your bees are out. Very, very little disruption. You put it back in and you put it back together. And the other thing is, same, you, you make a same size sticky board for your Varroa tests. You just pop one of those in there like that when you want to do your shiver test or whatever kind of Varroa test you like to do and do your counts. So that's the kind of bottom board that I like to make. Gives you lots of different options. And so that's the hive. That's what it looks like and we are going to make one in this series of videos. So the next thing we need to go over is we need to go over what kind of tools you're going to need. So here you can see in the shop I got lots of stuff. I got a, a nice miter saw and so I'll be building most of the building I'll be doing. I'll be using my tools that I have here just because it's a little easier. But you know all you really need this is the basic kind of essentials here. DeWalt jigsaw. I you don't have to be DeWalt, but whatever you get. My wife and I have a saying, we can't afford to be cheap. Get something nice with, it's got a ball in here, like a little uh, guide for the blade to go up and down, stops it from bending, and your blades last longer and gives you a way straighter cut. Drill, very important. Set of drill bits, also especially with a 7 8 or a 3 quarter drill bit like this, or if you want to try to grab one of these, are a little more pricey. Um, and a... Uh, a bit for dri driving screws. Uh, this is a Robertson in, in the States. You'll probably need a Phillips to drive screws in here like these. T-square is always important. Carpenter's most important tool always is a tape measure, hammer, utility knife, tin snips for cutting screens, stapler for putting screens down, and you can, oh, and one other thing, a good straight edge. This is just a, an old piece of Ikea hanging that you used to hang the, uh, you, you use to hang cupboards on. Um, I use that as a straight edge, a little bit extra. You can use a ruler, whatever you got, a, a yard stick or whatever, meter stick. So those are the basic tools you're going to need, and that'll get you going. So without further ado, let's get started with converting an, an existing single wall type to a double wall. 